your time starts now we are starting the second pediatric urology scenario a child 11 year old female child brought to you with history of recurrent uti she was quite asymptomatic till the age of 10 and symptoms started for the past 6 to 8 months she has documented e coli uti at least twice and uh, otherwise she is quite uh, good in weight and uh, activities wise everything is nicely preserved how are you going to evaluate her so i will see the patient with her parents in the clinic i will take a focus history do examination the presence of chapter and arrange some investigation and in the history i will ask uh, about uh, uh, the onset of this uh, infection uh, as i heard from the history there are two episodes i want to ask about the time period since when she had this episode about the symptoms with each one whether it is just a uh, dysuria frequency urgency or it's associated with fever vomiting growing pain which indicate pyelonephritis i would ask about uh, uh, the child um, uh, um, uh, neonatal history, any uh, any antenatal uh, hydronephrosis or abnormality uh, about the child uh, birth weight full term, about his about her development during this period, whether there is uh, any um, surgery done for her, any medical problem, any use of any medication. I'll ask about uh, uh, constipation, about how about her fluid intake, how frequent she is using the toilet. Uh, and also, um, uh, after that, I will go for, uh, I will ask about family history, if there is any family history of uh, urinary tract infection or abnormality in the kidneys like vasoconstrictive reflux. After that, in the presence of child problems, the patient consent, I will examine the patient, uh, uh, looking for her uh, uh, weight, height compared to the chart. I will check her blood pressure uh, as well. And then I will examine uh, her uh, looking for any uh, palpable kidney or tenderness in the loin, any palpable uh, mass in the uh, bladder. And uh, I will examine uh, the uh, perineum as well, looking for any obvious abnormality and examine uh, the back of the patient to exclude any feature of occult spina bifida or sacral uh, agenesis. I will arrange for uh, urine dipstick and urine culture. I review her previous uh, urine culture um, to see the antibiotic sensitivity and uh, I will arrange for a blood test for full blood count uh, and kidney function test and I will arrange for um, urinary ultrasound. Okay, her examination wise everything is normal, no congenital abnormalities or any physical significant findings noted. Her ultrasound showed evidence of left sided hydroerythronephrosis urine dipstick showed 1 plus leukocyte and 1 plus nitrite she is asymptomatic now but this is something like fourth or fifth episode of uti bloods were normal no evidence of any antenatal significant events okay and the first infant is uh, more than six months now yes now the uh, she's the fourth event of uti for the past 68 months yeah okay so this patient fit uh, uh, the definition of recurrent UTI in, in children is since she is having more than three um, cystitis over the last <clears throat> over the last six months, um, and since there is a hydronephrosis on the uh, left side, I want to investigate this further by arranging for um, a DMSA for this patient uh, to um, see if there is any scarring in the kidney and to check the separate renal function. Okay, DMSA scan shows that uh, left kidney function is 38%. There is evidence of scar in the left kidney upper pole. Right kidney is normal. Okay. So in this patient, uh, my suspicion is that it, uh, it, this is scarring may be related to vasoconstrictive reflux. Um, so I, I want uh, uh, a proper assessment to exclude the presence of reflux, which we can do either via MCUG, which give a good anatomic details, however, it is a little bit invasive, or we can arrange for her to have a, a MAG-3 with indirect uh, cystogram, since inserting a catheter for her may be um, uh, a little bit uh, challenging. How does this MAG-3 indirect renogram works? 
So in MAGA3, uh, indirect uh, cystogram, um, and we, the child needs to be potty trained, able to pass urine in command. Usually we don't use a catheter, we don't use a forcimide. So we will do a renogram by injecting uh, the isotopes, uh, IV um, in the child, and then we take a serial imaging, wait for the uh, bladder to be, uh, uh, wait for the uh, contrast of the radioisotopes to be excreted from the kidney, and the activity disappear from the region of interest in the kidney. And after that, when the bladder is full, we will ask the child to pass urine in front of the gamma camera, and the region of interest will be uh, both kidneys and the bladder as well. And usually when there is a reflux, um, uh, the, uh, uh, the affected kidney will show radioisotope activity again after initial um, clearance. And this gives us an idea indirectly about the presence of vasoconstrictive reflux. So it tells us that there is a reflux and it's reaching to the kidney, but it doesn't give uh, correct anatomical details and the sensitivity and specificity is less than the MCUG, but it is less invasive. Okay, so how the normal catheter-based maturating cystoerythrogram works? So uh, we want first to make sure that there is uh, no uh, infection by checking the urine sample and urine culture. And then I will give um, a prophylactic antibiotic at the time of the MCUG. Uh, a small catheter will be inserted into the bladder. Um, and since this patient is 11 years old, we will insert a small catheter um, put the contrast in the bladder, and then we take the catheter out, uh, take a full film uh, before voiding, and then after taking the catheter out, we'll take serial images during voiding, and this will show us if there is any uh, reflux, and then I will uh, do a post-void film at the end uh, as well. How will you decide how much contrast to give? Is there any reason for dilution? Um, uh, we usually we calculate the uh, uh, capacity of the bladder. Uh, we can use the bladder dairy to give us an idea about the functional bladder capacity. And I can use the equation of age uh, plus uh, one multiplied by uh, 30, um, uh, which will in this patient 11 plus one, which is a 12 multiplied by 30. It means that the bladder capacity is around 360 mil. So I will use a, a around 360 mil of contrast. Usually I will give 50-50 dilution. Uh, however, I can increase the concentration accordingly. Okay. The maturating cystoerythrogram shows evidence of left-sided reflex. And uh, a couple of pictures were taken. One showed reflex reaching up to say, crossing vessels area mid ureter on one showed reflex reaching all the way up to left puj how will you quantify the reflex uh, according to the international uh, uh, reflux uh, uh, study uh, grading system uh, we have five grade of reflux in grade one the contrast will reach into the ureter but not into the renal pelvis grade two the contrast reaching up to the renal pelvis but without dilatation Grade three, uh, there will be a uh, mild dilatation. Uh, uh, grade four, there will be moderate dilatation of the pelvis and some dilatation of the calyces with some tertiosity of the ureter. In grade five, there's a gross dilatation of the uh, uh, pelvis, gross dilatation of the calyces, and uh, gross tertiosity of the ureter. Okay, so how will you grade the patient which we are discussing? What is your next steps? So this patient, um, according to the MCG, it looks like a, a grade uh, uh, three to four uh, reflux. So I will explain the diagnosis to the family. Um, I will start the treatment by conservative advice uh, to them. Uh, the parent need to be educated about the signs and symptoms of urinary tract infection. Um, so when they notice these symptoms in the child, uh, they need to um, have a urine sample bring it to the uh, GP as soon as possible. Um, and uh, uh, I will advise uh, them to advise the child to drink good amount of water, uh, frequent voiding, uh, timed voiding, avoid constipation. Um, so all these advice which called urotherapy should be tried uh, uh, first. If the child is still having recurrent infection, then I will start uh, a low dose prophylactic antibiotic 
uh, to reduce the recurrence of infection. Okay, the parents are following all the advice you said, but in spite of prophylactic antibiotics, she does get recurrent UTI. What is your next step? Well, I will start her on uh, trimethoprim, uh, 2 mg per kg once daily prophylactic dose, and I will review her regularly. Uh, that's what, in spite of uh, the antibiotics, she's getting regular uh, breakthrough infections. What is your next step? Then this patient is indicated for um, surgery and um, uh, we can start with the uh, minimal invasive surgery in the form of endoscopic injection of uh, deflux, which is a dextranomer with hyaluronic acid. It will be injected uh, into uh, the uretric uh, orifice with uh, a HIT technique, which is hydrodistension uh, implantation technique. And it will, um, um, it will cause a, a mound <coughs> and by this, it will reduce uh, the uh, reflux um, success rate in the first injection is around 75 percent and in the second injection around 85 percent what is the hit technique what is the mechanism behind it um, mechanism is that uh, we, uh, we 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 inject uh, we introduce the needle at the um, at six o'clock in the lower in the uretric orifice and then we inject the substance um, so this will cause uh, a mount, and this mount will increase uh, the uh, co-optation or increase the efficacy of the vasoconstrictor junction, and by this it will reduce the reflux. What is the injection material made of? It is a combination of um, substances called dextranomer and hyaluronic acid, which are uh, biocompatible and biodegradable. Okay. Uh, unlike the previous one, which is Tiflon, which uh, was associated with migration into other parts okay what other options the child has other than the injections uh, if if the child is uh, having a high grade severe grade from the start like right grade five or the uh, endoscopic injection is not effective then uh, we will move to um, re-implantation of the ureter and we have many types of re-implantation either extra vasical left rigor type or the intravasical which is a uh, cross trigonal uh, cohen or the lead better polytano. Okay, well done. We'll stop there. Um, good discussion. Again, I have no concerns. Maybe if the opening gambit is a little bit uh, shorter, we can discuss the surgical steps like what is cross trigonal, what is the advantage, what is the disadvantage, but I think you can easily make it up. Um, I'm happy with your decision. I'm happy with your definition for recurrent uti and uh, you did uh, up down approach did uh, dmsa scan first and then went down to rule out the uh, vesicular reflex uh, there is another method they do uh vexillating history erythrogram first and then like a down up approach there is no major difference between that up down approach is uh, well established and accepted good do you have any questions in this scenario no thank you okay good